Our guest today is the Cook County State's Attorney. She is Cook County's first female state's attorney and first Hispanic state's attorney. Our guest today is a career prosecutor and a lifelong Chicagoan who was born in the Pilsen neighborhood and raised by working class parents. She earned her, earned her undergraduate degree from Loyola University and her law degree from Chicago Kent College, College of Law. She and her husband, Dr. James Gomez, are the proud parents of four children. And as she said at the table, two just received their driver's license, her twins. So we want to acknowledge them so they can watch this tomorrow and see they were mentioned in what we were doing. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the City Club, Anita Alvarez. Anita? Thanks so much, Jay. And you know, when I took my twin daughters uh, to get their license, I ran into uh, Lawrence Massal, who was doing the same thing. And um, although they were, they were all excited, I was secretly hoping they wouldn't pass um, because I just thought, oh, dear God, both of them driving at the same time. But they passed, and it was one of those, yay, yay, yeah, all right. Um, but thanks for uh, having me here today, and I am quite excited that I just got to meet uh, Richard Dent. Um, that's exciting for me, and uh, you know, when you guys were winning the Super Bowl, I was just beginning the study for the bar exam. So we, Barbary had just begun, and all the lawyers in the room know what I'm talking about, the review course, and uh, we were locked in rooms, and uh, you know, but everybody took time out to watch the Super Bowl, and it was so exciting. And uh, my study partner, of course, had a crush on Gary Fensick. So um, anyway, she didn't want to study until the Super Bowl was over. But uh, anyway, but I'm honored that you're here today. So thank you. Um, when we were trying to figure out uh, what my topic would be uh, today, we thought that, that, you know, because when I go around, a lot of people you know, uh, don't really understand what the Cook County State's Attorney's Office does, or at least understand uh, the immensity of it and, and how many people we have and our responsibilities. And, you know, sometimes I go places and people uh, ask if I'm Lisa Madigan, and, uh, <laughs> I, and I don't think we look anything alike, but, um, uh, you know, or I, even newscasters have said Attorney General Alvarez. I'm like, wow, I, you know, I didn't know I ran for Attorney General. Um, and so uh, I think it's important that you understand uh, exactly uh, what our office does and what a all of our responsibilities are here in Cook County. So um, that's going to be the topic of my uh, conversation today. So I want to thank Jay Doherty and everyone here at the City Club for the great work that you guys do and, and uh, the tradition that you've established uh, to bringing great conversation on public affairs to all of us in the city of Chicago. And the last time I saw Paul Green, he was jumping in the lake too. And there's only one person in this room that could get all of us to jump in the lake, and that's Skinny Sheehan. Uh, and of course, it was the coldest day, right? It was only about 10 degrees. Uh, by the time I got from the water to, and I didn't put my whole head in, I, 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 that's where I drew the line. I'm like, no, the head's not going in the water. But I still had icicles by the time I got from the water to the sand. Um, so it was pretty cold, and the look on Jimmy Fallon's face was priceless. It was, it, it really was. But Skinny and I jumped in together, and it was for a great uh, cause. And so I'm happy that you were able to raise all the money that you did. And you got me. I'm, I'll be there next year. Let's hope it's warmer, but I'll be there next year. <laughs> so thank all of you for coming out uh, today and uh, you know, taking your time out from your busy schedules uh, to, to listen. It's great to be back here at the City Club and be able to share my message about the role of state's attorney here uh, in the criminal justice system in Cook County. Part of my job as state's attorney is traveling around this very large county and meeting and interacting with the citizens that we serve. And one thing I've noticed is that most people don't really have that grasp of understanding of what we do. So having been part of this office for more than 25 years, it's easy for me to lose sight of the fact that everyone lives and breathes our mission. When most citizens think of our office, they think of our role as prosecutors of violent crime. And that's definitely, obviously, the most significant part of what we do. 
but the state's attorney's office has many additional responsibilities. With nearly 900 attorneys and more than 1,500 employees, we are the second largest prosecutor's office in the nation, second only to Los Angeles County. If we were a law firm, we would be the largest in the city of Chicago and largest in the state of Illinois. In addition to direct criminal prosecution, we file legal actions to enforce child support orders, we litigate it on behalf of consumers and the elderly, and we assist thousands of victims of domestic violence each and every year. We serve as legal counsel also for all of the Cook County government officials. My office also operates a specialized victim witness unit that offers immediate outreach and ongoing support for victims and witnesses engaged in the criminal justice process. And in a concentrated effort to bring the services of our office closer to the communities that we serve, I have opened four neighborhood-based community justice centers. These centers are staffed by assistant state's attorneys and administrative personnel who work closely on the prosecution and prevention of local crime with police districts, community groups, schools, businesses, and area residents. My office is divided into seven dedicated bureaus. Criminal prosecutions, narcotics, special prosecutions, juvenile justice, civil actions, investigations, and the Administrative Service Bureau. Our Cook County Assistant State's Attorneys prosecute all of the misdemeanor and felony cases that are committed in Cook County. This means that we handle each and every criminal case that occurs in the city of Chicago and throughout the 130 suburban municipalities. And I think you can agree that, that the sheer volume of the cases that we see each and every day um, is staggering. And other uh, prosecutor's offices are not, um, uh, not um, organized the way we are. And many of them don't handle misdemeanors. Los Angeles doesn't. Many of them don't handle traffic. Uh, but we, we handle it all. In 2013, my office disposed of more than 211,000 felony uh, and misdemeanor cases. If you just think of that, 211,000 felony and misdemeanor cases, which represents an increase of almost 4% over the previous year. My assistant state's attorneys bring to trial an average of 200 cases each and every week in courtrooms across Chicago and throughout suburban Cook County, and there's five suburban districts. These numbers do not include more than the 17,000 cases involving juvenile offenders that were referred to us and screened by the assistant state's attorneys in our Juvenile Justice Bureau. Now, that doesn't mean we put 17,000 cases into the system on the juvenile side, absolutely not. But those are the cases that are brought to us by the police department that we have to screen and we have to figure out exactly, is this case gonna go into the system or is it something that's gonna be diverted out? The actual number of cases filed on the, on the juvenile side is 6,500, approximately 6,500 cases a year. So unlike our federal partners in the United States Attorney's Office, the Cook County State's Attorney's Office handles each and every case that comes into the system. We drink from the fire hose when it comes to ca catching all of our cases. That being said, my office enjoys an excellent working relationship with the U.S. Attorney's Office and all of our federal partners. In recent months, I've had the opportunity to meet several times with our new U.S. Attorney, Zach Farden, and I have found him to be extremely professional and committed to his new position. And as a side note, Skinny, he's a runner, and he does a sub three hour marathon. Pretty impressive, uh, pretty impressive. And I know he's gonna be here. <laughs> he's not gonna catch you? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I know he's going to be here uh, to speak, and uh, I'm happy uh, to continue the relationship uh, that we had with Pat Fitzgerald um, with, um, with uh, Zach Farden. And he's doing Boston this year as well. Uh, I'm confident that we will enjoy a very productive partnership uh, with him, and it will be beneficial for public safety throughout Cook County and the whole Northern District of Illinois. In my office, uh, the somewhat alarming reality is that we manage um, our caseload in spite of continuing cuts to our staffing and resources. As a result of the county's elimination of more than 130 assistant state's attorneys, investigators, and administrative staff over the last five years, our ranks remain significantly understaffed. There is no question that these cuts have had a negative impact on our quality of service in some areas as well as our ability to move cases through the system as quickly as we would like. 
I got a letter uh, from a family of a, a victim on a case that we lost. It was a misdemeanor case out in the Bridgeview courtroom. And it really was, um, the letter was actually, even though they were upset that it was a not guilty, it was a misdemeanor charge, but the uh, person who wrote the letter, the father of the victim, said, I felt sorry for your assistant state's attorney because she was by herself, and I don't believe she had enough time to really spend with all of the witnesses and the victims because she had to get to her next case because she was all alone in the courtroom. So those are the kinds of things that, you know, when people talk about cuts and, and management, that hurts. Uh, it really hurts. Um, right now, an uh, individual misdemeanor assistant state's attorney in my office is handling a caseload of nearly 1,600 pending cases, while a felony assistant handles an average of about 200 cases per attorney. My prosecutors carry among the highest caseloads compared with our counterparts across the nation. And, um, you know, obviously the cases that we handle are the most serious of cases, and guns and violence, uh, as we're well aware, here in the city of Chicago, but it's not just here, it's all over the place. In our day-to-day -day operations, the criminal justice issues that demand the greatest amount of personnel and financial resources are clearly crimes involving gang and gun violence. Gun violence and other associated violent crimes continue to present an imminent threat to the citizens that we serve and pose an enormous challenge for all of us in law enforcement, particularly when it comes to the violence that we see every day in the streets of Chicago. In order to try to tackle these issues with a fresh approach, my office led efforts to implement the new street gang RICO law. This law provides local prosecutors throughout Illinois with the tools of racketeering and RICO to target gang organizations. This enables us to target gang leaders who are engaged in a pattern of crimes involving violence, such as illegal weapons, sex offenses, terrorism, and of course, drug trafficking. Last year, the Cook County State's Attorney's Office became the first pros prosecutor's office in Illinois to utilize the new provisions of the street gang RICO. We charge more than 40 leaders and senior members of the Black Souls, a Chicago street gang responsible for the operation of a violent drug dealing enterprise on Chicago's west side. It's an unprecedented case here in Chicago that utilized the new legal tools provided by the RICO law. The operation, conducted in partnership with the Chicago Police Department and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, targeted top gang leaders as well as key members, gang enforcers and gang supervisors who have been operating an open air, 24 hour a day criminal drug enterprise on the west side. Right now, we are continuing to actively investigate and develop new RICO cases in partnership with local and regional police and prosecutors. And I believe you will be hearing more news of additional RICO charges and operations in the near future as we go along. Another major initiative targeting gun and gang violence is the Valadez Law. It's a measure that was written by my administration and passed into Illinois law in 2009. This law increases the penalties for gang members who are arrested by police carrying loaded weapons. Defendants convicted under the Valadez law now face mandatory prison sentence instead of being eligible for probation. We named this law in honor of Chicago police officer Alejandro Valadez who was just 27 years old when he was struck down by gunfire while he and his partner were investigating a report of gunshots fired in the Englewood community in June of 2009. I had the honor of personally prosecuting that case and last month the final two defendants convicted of the murder of Officer Valadez were sentenced to 105 and 120 years in prison respectively. The Valadez Law is, providing, is proving to be an extremely effective tool in our battle against gun and gang violence. Since this law went into effect, a total of 472 defendants have been charged. Our conviction rate under this law is nearly 90%, and the vast majority of the defendants are, elec are electing to plead guilty rather than to go to trial. I can stand before you today and provide you with the numbers and statistics to offer some insight into our role of the criminal justice system. But our work with our victims and families is the heart and soul of what we do. And that work cannot be measured in a bureaucratic budget analysis or spelled out with charts and graphs. So I'd like to take a minute on a very personal level to tell you about the Valadez family, a real Chicago family impacted in the worst possible way by gang and gun violence. It's a humble family of modest means. And the Valadez family had already lost one son to gang violence, um, which prompted 
Alex and his two, one of his brothers and one of his sisters to become Chicago police officers. So Mr. and Mrs. Valadez had three children in the Chicago Police Department. And then they lost Alex. He was a loving, promising, he was their baby. He was a hardworking young police officer struck down at the hands of those that he was working to serve and protect. And when you think about it, they respond to a call of shots fired. And the very people that they were there to protect are the people that killed him. Alex and his girlfriend were expecting a baby when he was shot and killed. A son who he had never had the opportunity to see or to hold. He left a police partner that remains absolutely devastated from this unspeakable crime. The Valadez family trial involved three defendants and spanned more than three years. And when the final two defendants were sentenced last month, I said my goodbyes to Mr. and Mrs. Valadez and to their children. But it was bittersweet. It was, it was a bittersweet way to meet them. Um, they're truly a wonderful family, and I'm grateful that I got to know them. But I'm also upset that our our paths crossed in this fashion, but I will always remain friends with them. And they are very honored um, that uh, their other two uh, children are continuing to be Chicago police officers. Um, moving on, I would like to take an opportunity to discuss another issue that I'm very passionate about as Cook County State's Attorney. And this is our new sexual assault and domestic violence uh, division. As a career prosecutor, I've seen more than my share of murders and acts of violence and abuse against women and children. Unfortunately, we do not need to look very far to be reminded of the devastating challenges we face when it comes to these crimes. Last year, the Chicago Police Department reported that there were 35 domestic violence homicides and approximately 187,000 calls for service for domestic violence, 187,000. When it comes to sexual assault, statistics show that one in four girls and one in six boys will be sexually assaulted by the age of 18. And it is believed that more than 80% of sexual assault victims were attacked by someone that they knew. Consider the number of cases involving sexual or domestic violence that my office charged last month. This is just last month, in just one week's time. In one week, uh, these numbers represent the cases that our office approved felony charges, uh, on over the course of just one week. Between March 15th and March 22nd, the Cook County State's Attorney's Office charged 13 cases of aggravated domestic battery and nine cases of predatory criminal sexual assault, including five cases in which the victim was under the age of 13 years old. We also charged 12 additional cases of aggravated criminal sexual assault and one case of child pornography. Tragically, that very same week, we charged two male defendants in separate cases with the brutal murders of two infants. In one case, a 19-month-old child sustained blunt force trauma to her head before her body was transported to a south suburb where it was burned and dumped in the woods. In the other case, a two-and-a-half-year-old child was repeatedly beaten and forced to stand in a corner for hours at a time because she was not potty trained. The child suffered fractured ribs, a lacerated liver, blood in her abdominal cavity, ruptured intestines, and a dislocated jaw. And that child was left dead in an apartment while the defendant left to go purchase and smoke marijuana before she was discovered by the police. Unfortunately, we continue to see and hear the tragic and heartbreaking stories of vulnerable children who fall victim to these horrific crimes, oftentimes at the hands of the very individuals who should be protecting them. In addition to all of these felony cases that I just described, my office charged 276 cases of misdemeanor domestic violence during the same time period over the course of just one week here in Cook County. When it comes to these crimes, and uh, our victims uh, vary widely in age and life experience. Crimes of violence against women and children are not discriminatory. Our victims are young, they're old, they're wealthy, they're poor, they're impover impoverished, and all races are impacted by these crimes. Our victims and co our college students, mothers, seniors, runaways, high school students, drug users, professionals, or women engaged in prostitution. From a law enforcement perspective, one of the greatest challenges that we face in the effective prosecution of these crimes is the participation of our victim. It can be terrifying for these special victims to ste step up, come forward, and confront their attacker 
particularly when the offender is someone that they know or someone that they love or they think that they love, or they may have trusted at some point in their lives. Over the course of the last several years, my staff and I have worked very hard to improve and prioritize the investigation and, pro and prosecution of sexual assault and domestic violence. And we have made some great strides. But it's clear that there's more work to be done. So today I'm announcing the creation of a new unit within my office that will handle all cases of sexual assault, domestic violence, and sexual and internet crimes against children. Our new Sexual Assault and Domestic Violence Division will, for the first time in the history of the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, coordinate the investigation and prosecution of these crimes under one umbrella. Sexual and domestic violence cases are very complex and they involve unique dynamics. They are also highly sensitive and involve some of the most vulnerable victims that we see as prosecutors. Prosecutors who are specially trained and who routinely handle domestic violence and sexual violence cases can recognize common barriers to effectively handle these cases and develop strategies to overcome them. The consolidation of our resources in one division will provide us with the opportunity to bring seasoned prosecutors with concentrated trial experience and focused training together to fight for the support of our victims whose lives are often devastated by these heinous crimes. I'm also confident that the creation of this new unit is going to increase our opportunities to expand our work with advocates and the community partners to help promote victim safety and offender accountability. From my perspective, it's absolutely crucial that we continue to talk openly about these crimes and seek collaborative uh, solutions. Law enforcement cannot and will not ever solve these problems in isolation, and it's not just a woman's problem or a woman's issue, it's a community issue. These are crimes that are not occurring far too free, that are occurring far too frequently right here and right now and throughout all of our communities. So we must continue to focus on those crimes and, I'm uh, and I am confident that this new unit will bring uh, much expertise to handling these cases. I'd also like to just switch gears here a little bit and talk about uh, the, our Conviction Integrity Unit, just an update. Um, and I'll share some new use, uh, news about the important work that we've been doing um, in our Conviction Integrity Unit. Uh, the subject of wrongful convictions is a challenging one for any prosecutor, no matter where you're at. But it is an issue that we must confront with and something that we must deal with in an open and proactive manner. In my view, our job is not uh, just about racking up convictions. On the front end, it can identify nonviolent offenders uh, and provide effective alternatives to keep them out of the system, and, and that's something that we must do. On the back end, we must investigate allegations of wrongful con or questionable convictions uh, of the past and take proper action. The bottom line is that we have the, to seek justice, even if that measure of justice means that we must acknowledge mistakes made in the past. That is why I created the first ever Conviction Integrity Unit within the Cook County State's Attorney's Office in order to place a new emphasis and a stronger focus on our review of cases involving questionable convictions. This unit has been reviewing post-conviction cases that are brought to our attention, paying particular attention to the types of cases that we have seen um, that have led to wrongful convictions in the past. These are generally cases that involve single eyewitnesses or cases that have confessions with little or no supporting evidence. We are also paying close attention to cases that involve juvenile defendants or defendants with mental health issues. Part of this effort also involves providing ongoing and increased training to all of our assistant state's attorneys to give them access to new research and information that can help them ensure that not that only guilty people are charged and convicted here in Cook County. As I said when I began the unit two years ago, if we find evidence to believe that we prosecuted or prosecuting someone who is actually innocent, we will take immediate steps to investigate the matter to fully see that justice is served. And this time, I have taken the unprecedented measure of vacating the convictions of six individuals as a direct result of our conviction integrity investigations. <clears throat> We are and we will continue our work in this area to bring our very best efforts to ensure that we handle these cases responsibly and with a level of transparency and open dialogue that has not previously been demonstrated here in Cook County. Um, our alternative prosecution programs, and there are many of them, uh, it's obvious that they're very important that my office continues to be tough on crime, and we always will. But I also feel very strongly that we need to be smart on crime, and that really should, is what we should be asking ourselves. Are we being smart on crime? 
And throughout the course of my administration as state's attorney, we have continued to commit resources to alternative programs that allow nonviolent misdemeanor and felony offenders to avoid traditional prosecution. In fact, I'm very proud to announce that my office has recently cho was recently chosen by the Center for Court Innovation as one of three jurisdictions in the country with the most promising practices and innovative programming with respect to our deferred prosecution programs. Working with our criminal justice partners, my office administers five drug courts, six veterans courts, and seven mental health courts, in addition to three major alternative prosecution programs. And at my direction this past year, we have expanded the criteria for eligibility in all programs as broadly as possible to include all potential nonviolent offenders. This includes the dramatic expansion of our misdemeanor deferred prosecution program that we developed 18 months ago at two branch courts in Chicago and two district courthouses in the suburbs. This program is uh, specifically directed at veterans and individuals in need of mental health services charged with misdemeanor offenses such as theft, retail theft, vandalism, or prostitution. To date, there have been more than 1,000 participants in this program who have, been, who have completed successfully um, at a rate of more than 90%. We have also dismissed more than 700 cases on the front end of the system after linking these individuals to community-based behavioral and health care providers, as well as the resources of the Veterans Administration. Last year, there were, were more than 5,800 participants in some form of alternative prosecution. Programming, this programming has been so effective, and 1,500 uh, in some, we have had about 1,500 defendants in some form of alternative sentencing program. So not just the deferred prosecution, but also sentencing. The success of these programs can be measured in terms of both recidivism rates of participants as well as the cost savings to Cook County taxpayers. The programming consistently shows a more than 80% decrease in criminal activity among all participants upon completion of this treatment. In addition, these programs resulted in a cost savings of more than 15 million last year based upon reduced days defendants spent in custody and reduced court costs related to fewer cases proceeding to trial. At that time, when jail, at the time when jail overcrowding and the county's overall financial health are such pertinent issues, I think it's vital that we recognize the success of our existing programs and seek their expansion in the future with an investment of funding and resources. Commissioner Fritchie, are you listening? These programs are improving public safety by reducing recidivism, providing needed services for vulnerable populations and creating significant savings for the county through both reduced detention time and lowered recidivism. Perhaps best of all, these are providing a second chance for nonviolent offenders to turn their lives around and become productive members of society. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about the important work that we do each and every day um, in the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, and I have probably overwhelmed you with all this information today. Uh, but I have to tell you what really makes our office a very special place are the people who work in our office. We have an outstanding team of men and women who consistently go above and beyond the call of duty under very extremely challenging circumstances. And we also have a lot of great people who do outstanding things each and every day in our office and outside of our office. And I was reminded of that yesterday when I had the opportunity to meet the daughter of one of my assistant state's attorneys. Her name is Kendall Coyne, and she stopped by our office to show us the silver medal that she won as a member of the United States women's hockey team in the Winter Olympics. <laughs> I think Kendall's a wonderful example of the dedication, success, and family that I think her story can and should inspire all of us. And as a hockey mom, as you know, both of my sons play hockey. We shared some great stories. I was trying to get some information out of her about the NHL players and how they behave themselves over in Sochi. She was a little tight-lipped. I kind of wanted to have some stuff. But um, I got to tell you, it was amazing. That silver medal is heavy. Um, and she's, a, as you could see, she's a, she's a petite woman. Uh, but it was 
so exciting to hear her story and just to see um, her dad, who was one of my assistants in my civil division, how proud he was um, to be in Sochi and to see her and have her represent us um, in the Winter Olympics. And so I think that's awesome. And I got to put the medal on, uh, you know, uh, just having, you know, fantasies about what it had been like if I were, you know, 21 again and, and in the Olympics. Um, would have been great. Um, so I'd just like to uh, close with saying I want to thank all of uh, the assistant state's attorneys who are with me here today uh, for the tremendous work that, that you do. <laughs> And I also uh, want to thank all of you for taking your time or listening to us today, to me today. Thank you. No, Donovan? Oh, uh, we have questions. Uh, Donovan Peppers applauded those six that you, I figure half are his relatives. I just, I'm, just, I'm just guessing. Okay, if we have any questions, where's our little, uh, raise your hand, don't be shy, this is a city club. Shyness is not allowed. <laughs> any questions? Boy, you really intimidated. Uh, <laughs> I think it was that polar plunge. Uh, oh, I know what it was. You, you made a, mis uh, a slight error, Jay. You forgot part of her schooling. What high school did you go to? Maria High School. As did someone we know very well. Many people we know very well. By the way, it's a cult. So, uh, <laughs> no questions whatsoever. Huh. Well, you don't have, well, obviously you have a tough question because you have nobody sitting at your table, so go right ahead. <laughs> Yell it out. You can't, go ahead, real loud. Um, Anita, what do you do every day on the every day? Who are you, first of all? It is a hard job, and sometimes it's a thankless job, because no matter what decision you make as state's attorney, someone's going to be upset. Um, uh, but you have to take every day one day at a time and do what's right, and, and never forget the fact that you're there to serve victims, the victims of crime. That's, you know, that's, our, that's who we serve. And it doesn't matter where you are in this very large county, everybody wants the same thing, and they want safety, public safety. They want their children to be safe, going to school, going to church, going to a park. And so I have a great staff that, that works with me and very dedicated assistant state's attorneys that make my life a little easier. On a personal level, I run. I, I have to get up and run every morning. In fact, my chief of staff says, let her get her run in or she's crabby. So um, I get my run in. Skinny knows this, although he wants me to run the marathon. I, I told him, no, that's OK. Um, but that's mentally, that's how I get ready for work. I get up and I run five miles every morning. <laughs> And then my kids keep me busy with hockey and soccer. Okay. Well, great job. A round of applause.